The disciplinary focus of the poultry station for the livestock management CDE in 2020 is nutrition. This is Brian Reiling and I'll be comp providing commentary on this set of slides uh, developed by Dr. Sheila Purdom, Professor of Animal Science with the University of Nebraska. She also serves as the station coordinator for the poultry component of this contest. Now when we talk about poultry, uh, these are monogastric animals, which basically means they have one acid secreting stomach. However, unlike our other livestock species, or even unlike our other monogastric species, uh, they have very specialized organs for feed breakdown. They have a very high rate of digesta, and rather than security, secreting urine uh, to remove nitrogen, they actually secrete uric acid. Now when we talk about the specialized organs, this is a picture of the uh, chicken's digestive tract. First of all, if we start up here at the beginning, uh, they have a beak. Okay. Now that beak is important for some of your wild, animal, wild birds uh, who will use that to break down food particles before they consume it. Um, Obviously, it'll go down through the esophagus, and then we move into the crop. Now, the crop is effectively an enlargement of the esophagus. It is primarily used uh, as a storage uh, location. From there, it moves into the proventriculus. Now, the proventriculus is considered the glandular stomach. Uh, this is where we see hydrochloric acid being secreted uh, for a chemical breakdown of food particles. From there, we'll move into the gizzard. Okay, uh, the gizzard uh, is where we see mechanical digestion uh, of food particles. Uh, and then from that point, we'll move into the duodenal loop where basically a lot of enzymes are sprayed into that component of the small intestine to facilitate enzymatic breakdown. And then we move into uh, the middle section of the small intestine known as the jejunum. And that is primarily where we see uh, absorption of various food particles that have been broken down to individual amino acids, uh, glucose itself, uh, those types of things that can be absorbed directly across uh, the ruminal wall. And from there we move out into the, the large, in, large intestine where we have uh, resorption of water, uh, storage of undigested food, and that type of thing. So uh, I would highly expect uh, that you should know and recognize the various components of the uh, poultry digestive tract. Uh, you should understand what the purpose of those uh, various parts are, especially those that are unique uh, to avian species. It is important for your students uh, to have a basic understanding of nutrient requirements and how those type might change relative to productivity. In this picture, the larger white bird, the larger bird is a picture of a mature white rock. Uh, that particular breed of breed of chicken produces brown eggs uh, and the other the smaller bird is a mature white leghorn now which one would you expect to have the greatest maintenance requirements typically maintenance requirements increase as size of an animal increases however the white leghorn uh, is a very productive breed that produces an abundance of eggs and so she likely is going to produce more eggs in her total lifetime yet because she may be smaller, likely has lower maintenance requirements. Now for those who have uh, a small number of birds, you likely might purchase feed at the local farm store or co-op. These are typically complete feeds, meaning that they are nutritionally balanced and that every bite that the chicken happens to take uh, will be nutritionally balanced with all, containing all of the nutrients that they need. Now what type of feed should you buy for baby chicks? What type of feed should you buy for laying hens? Uh, there's a couple of different forms of feed that are available. Uh, a mash typically looks like this, where you see the finely ground corn and soybean meal and other feed ingredients that might be incorporated. Uh, oftentimes, for smaller, younger chicks, uh, you may feed more of a pellet or a crumble type uh, device. Common feed ingredients used in poultry diets include corn, soybean meal, dried distiller's grains, vegetable oil, tallow, or even restaurant grease, uh, limestone, oyster shells, dicalcium phosphate, and then of course vitamin trace mineral mixes. Uh, 
students preparing for this particular CDE are strongly encouraged to view this video uh, that was developed by Dr. Purdom uh, specifically for this particular uh, contest where she'll not only describe these uh, various ingredients, she will show you and then also characterize uh, their general purpose in the diet. Feed ingredients commonly associated with poultry diets include corn, an energy source, soybean meal, a primary protein source, dried distiller's grains, which is also high in protein, vegetable oil, tallow, or even restaurant grease, a major energy source that is very energy dense, limestone, a source of calcium, oyster shells, a source of calcium, dicalcium phosphate, which provides both calcium and phosphorus, and then of course, uh, the chickens will need a vitamin and trace mineral premix. Those preparing for this particular contest are uh, encouraged to watch this video uh, that was developed by Dr. Purdom, uh, who will not only show these various feed, feed sources, but will also describe and characterize uh, their purpose in a poultry diet. Earlier, we alluded to different types of feeds that might be fed to poultry species, uh, including a mash or perhaps a, uh, a crumble or pelleted type feed. Uh, students, again, preparing for this contest should view this video uh, that was developed by Dr. Purdom uh, regarding uh, the types of feeds that may be fed to animals. Uh, on this video, you learn about differences between layer feed and broiler feeds, uh, what types of diets uh, you should supplement with large particle calcium and why. Uh, you'll dis discover if alfalfa pellets or flakes can actually serve as an appropriate supplement for chickens and why would you not supplement your flock with uh, kitchen waste, things along those lines. So you're strongly encouraged to view this particular video uh, that was doc developed by Dr. Purdom for this particular CDE. Now, when we talk about broiler diets, uh, Dr. Purdom's put up here basically uh, uh, some basic broiler diets uh, for starter chicks uh, from zero to three weeks of age, age, for growers four to six weeks of age, and for finishing uh, broilers that are approximately seven weeks of age. You'll notice uh, the quantity of corn increases as we get uh, closer and closer to a market weight. Uh, the quantity of soybean meal actually tends to decrease, and that's likely because our protein requirements uh, are likely decreasing as we approach market weight. Um, other changes you'll notice, uh, the quantity of fat has increased. The energy requirements are going to increase. Um, a slight reduction in the amount of limestone uh, is incorporated and a significant drop in the amount of methionine that may be supplemented uh, to the diet. Again, primarily a function as the animals increase in age, as they increase in weight, their protein and specific amino acid requirements will tend to decrease as they uh, uh, reach maturity. This slide shows the actual uh, nutrient requirements of broilers as they move from a starter to a grower to a finishing uh, type diet. Uh, the first thing that I would uh, recognize is the fact that your crude protein value uh, has decreasing from 22% as a starter chick, uh, zero to three weeks of age, to only 18% uh, as a, a finishing type animal. Uh, the amount of fat that's incorporated in the diet has gone from 5.9 to 7.3 percent uh, and consequently the amount of energy that's provided in the diet has gone from approximately 3,000 kilocalories to 3,200 kilocalories per kilogram. Uh, the finishing bird uh, who is depositing a higher percentage of fat uh, and less muscle has a significantly higher energy requirement than that of the starter chick. Uh, the calcium has decreased slightly uh, not a lot of change in phosphorus uh, or sodium. The methionine, which happens to be the first limiting amino acid in poultry diets, uh, has decreased significantly, as have most of our other amino acids, including tryptophan, lysine, and threonine. Now, what should your students expect in review? 
uh, certainly they should have an understanding of the digestive physiology of the chicken. Uh, what are the unique parts of the avian digestive system and their function? For example, uh, they've got a beak rather than really a mouth full of teeth. Uh, they've got a crop, uh, which is basically a storage location. They've got a proventriculus and a gizzard. What's the function of those uh, in the digestive system of uh, the chicken? They should have a basic understanding of the nutrient requirements of different birds. Uh, what is the impact of weight on maintenance requirements? Uh, how do the uh, nutrient requirements of layers change throughout the production cycle? How do the nutrient requirements of broilers change throughout the growth cycle from a starter to a grower to a finishing bird? They should be able to identify and characterize basic feeds that are commonly used in poultry diets uh, as described by Dr. Perdiman and also why are those types of feeds incorporated into the diet of various birds. They should be able to describe, identify, characterize uh, the types of diets that should be, should be fed to uh, what types of birds, again as described by Dr. Perdiman in the video that she provided. Thank you very much and we wish all of your contestants the best of luck.